what touched me most are the testimonies I got from the students and especially about answered prayer. Some of the prayers that were answered actually amazed me. I especially remember one girl who came to my office and said, Pastor, do you remember my name? I said, well, not really, but she said, okay, do you remember what you prayed for? Then I said, well, I've been praying for a lot of people, but uh, she said, she started shedding tears and she said, my father got lost seven years ago and I came to you, you prayed for me. And the next day, my father called home. As she was saying this testimony, I was also amazed enjoying the testimony. I also remember about young people who had experienced salvation, young people who had overcome temptations, young people who had learned how to study the Bible. When I put all this together, it was so amazing. I was inspired. I was overjoyed. And one lady, to finish with, came and said, I prayed for these three friends when you began the week of prayer. And now they are here, going to be baptized. So One of the things I'm so grateful for is to have been able to be rekindled in terms of my spiritual life. Just being able to read um, Revelation again. You know, one of the truths that you imagine you knew and then the students come with so many questions and then you just have to study your word to know direction. That's one of the things this mission has done for me. Testimony. The one thing that touched me, if I remember very well, there was these two sisters, Catholic, who were contemplating on to be baptized or not baptized. And um, so one of the sisters decided to get baptized. The other one decided, ah, let me go and ask my parents. So she went home to ask her mom. Her mom said, no, you can't get baptized because you were baptized already when you were a kid, so you can't get baptized again. And she... She told them she wanted to get baptized because she now knew the truth about making a decision for baptism. So when she said this, uh, the sister-in-law overheard the conversation and she pulled her aside and asking her questions. So why are you deciding to get baptized? So this girl pulled out all the notes from all the sermons for the whole week and preached all the sermons again to this older sister, the sister-in-law. And by the end of it all, I don't know how long she preached to her for, but by the end of all the sermons, I think there were like 14, 15 sermons, that sister decided to become baptized. She said, this makes sense. I want to be Adventist also. So when I left, they were arranging a special baptism for that particular, particular lady. I think the other thing I'd like to mention is meeting students with an honest desire to know truth. I met four Muslim boys who approached me and all they were asking is, how do I, how do I read this Bible? What do I do with this Bible? Now imagine all they're asking for is, how do I read Bible? How do I read the scriptures? And so unfolding to them the, the simple ways of just making the Bible and God their friend was such a blessing. One of the most striking experiences that I had is uh, when we were starting the week of prayer, the students were kind, uh, rowdy and unruly in the hall. But after we prayed, God the miracle, they became um, miraculously attentive and they listen throughout the entire week of prayer. Poverty is a big issue and one of the constant prayer themes that I had to address together with my wife who came. But it is the approach by one of the students that just carried for me the day. Rather than the rest who are like the rest who are worried and anxious, this boy came and just asked me what more skills can I learn? I'm trying to learn every kind of skill. You know, our parents are growing old and it is our time to be able to give back to them. Coming from a teenager in a, in a world that is extremely selfish, this was unlike, it was uncharacteristic, but I noticed one more powerful thing with this boy is that his commitment to God was rock solid. Amidst all of that, I understood that his desire to help out his parents, his desire to learn and amass skills, came from the transforming power of the gospel. And to see it happening at such a young age gave me a lot of hope that though the world is full of selfishness and the rest, there's still lots and lots of hope. One of the general lessons that I learned from that is total dependence upon God. 
waking up in the morning for morning devotion, preparing on my sermons, I realized that through it all, I literally had to depend upon God. On one of the days that we were sharing, I was sharing with the staff, the teachers, and the non-teaching staff in the, in the primary school. We were preaching and we were, I, was, I was sharing, and in the middle of the, of the sharing, we started hearing screams and shouts, and we were wondering what was happening. We were actually sharing on the plan of salvation. Teachers and the staff were attentive and they were and they were enjoying the message. But at, at that moment, when the scripts came up, come up and uh, we looked out of the window and we saw children dropping to the ground, we were surprised and wondering what was happening. So we all stood up, we all stopped, and we looked out. And one of the uh, children who was running, we saw others running around. One of them particularly ran into the classroom and we realized that he was actually being attacked by a swarm of bees, uh, and a big number of them. Uh, and we had, we just reacted uh, the way we could. We removed our coats and jackets and the teachers were removing their sweaters and we were hitting all the, the bees down to the ground, killing them uh, and stepping upon them. And at that moment in time, the kid was safe. Uh, he was stung. Uh, number of times his name was actually Matthias. Uh, he was stung very very badly and by God's grace none of us in the classroom were actually stung by the bees that which is a is a miracle from God. Uh, Matthias was taken to Matthias was taken to uh, the nurse the nurse uh, at the sanatorium. He was uh, given injections and he was well. Uh, we went back to the room uh, immediately after that incident we prayed and we continued the message and it was a blessing for the teachers, it was a blessing for me as well. Uh, I remember this, what we were sharing on, as again as I said, was the plan of salvation. I think the greatest impact I had from the Ugandan mission was this young, young guy I met, his name was Peter Garan. He had been a Catholic who had been studying the Word of God for so long, but making a decision for Christ had been so difficult for him. So after the final presentation on that day, when he chose to be baptized, came to see me in the office and said, Subia, I want to be baptized. I was literally in tears. I marveled at what God could do, even to move the hearts of people who had vowed never to make decisions for him. Of course, I expected something fun, something to enjoy, but the experience I gained was actually from where I stayed, number one, the conditions were not what I expected. There wasn't much of planning, there wasn't very good place to stay and all that. But I found out at the end that uh, God was actually teaching me a lesson that if you really prayed for an experience and you wanted an experience, what if that is the only place I had? What if that is the only condition I met and I still needed to win souls? So I had to make up my mind and say, number one, I came here to win souls and so I was just there to win souls and I forgot about the place I was staying. And that is the same, same lesson I'd like to share with you. When you depend upon God totally wholesome, God is going to give you all the message, everything that you need to impart to the children. Uh, one thing I thank uh, also God for in this mission is the fact that although it was in a foreign country, that God saw it well that he could send missionaries from a foreign land to go to another country to actually do the mission work. And then another one that touched me in particular, I spoke about excellence one day and I made all like seven students and made them line up on stage and uh, I was asking them if this guy looked excellent and this one looked excellent and then it turned out that most kids didn't have ties and what have you and this one poor student um, wrote me a letter asking me madam may I may you please buy me, write, buy me a tie I don't have a tie I can't afford a tie and I was so happy. I went and I bought him a tie. He was so excited. Sadly, we didn't get a tie, but we got a receipt so that when he gets, when the tie is coming, he'll have enough time. Well, if he gets time, you know what I'm trying to say. He'll get the tie and, you know, but I have never seen someone so happy my whole entire life. He was so excited. It's like giving someone a million shillings, you know. Then I imagine the young Catholic girl who kept sitting at the same exact position every day, day after day, and came back to me and told me, I'm not really convicted, but I want to get baptized. And she asked all manner of questions and that yearningness, that hunger to 
come and listen to God is something that would make any missionary, including myself, want to keep going back to the same hillside school day after day. I well, that that is uh, one of the things that many people do not know about and it's one of the things that the devil does not want people to know about but God is there, he wants us to take that message. The devil tried to stop the message but we still gave the message and it went out and together with that actually the bees where they came from was on an electrical pole that was just beside the baptismal font and even with all that happened and we know that the devil was trying to disrupt the meeting we were able to secure by removing the bees from that place the baptismal font for the baptism. And who would forget Stevie, the boy from Rwanda who is, whose parents and family does not come to visit him anymore but he's determined to be able to make it through in life and he's studying as hard as he can on a work study program. He was utterly, utterly amazing. He's of course older than the rest of his colleagues because of what he has to do but he still does it. One of the children in particular came and asked me, Janet, um, so what, what posture should I use while kneeling down? And I thought that's a very interesting question. I mean, we think it's normal, but it's, it's such basic skills. I think mission is not as complicated as some of us think about it. It's really just about sharing your experience, your testimony, and that was it. What did I learn from this mission that my circumstance does not matter. God is, God is in charge. I frankly went into mission feeling very low because of certain personal circumstances, but I came out feeling extremely encouraged that God is doing a great work. And on arriving back home, there were applications I had done, and I almost think like God in answer to me going to mission had made sure that they were answered accordingly. And perhaps I will just encourage our fellow young people to have these missionary spirits and to know that the only difference between an ordinary person and an extraordinary person is the word extra, because extraordinary people do extraordinary things and we must learn to be extraordinary for Jesus Christ. Thank you. Definitely to see the close to 40 souls that were baptized was a mission moving moment for me, um, especially that these were young people who had made that solid commitment. So um, in a nutshell, I thank God for this experience. It was worth it. Um, it changed me, it made me um, appreciative, is that such a word? Appreciative of my childhood. You know, these kids have got a rough childhood, but I thank God for everything my parents did for me. I'm very, very grateful. God bless you. Join us for mission next year. I just want to encourage anybody who is listening to this testimony that when we go out there, there's a joy that we will never experience until we go out there. So let's us all join to go for mission work and God is going to bless us as we see others being blessed. And may the Lord bless you very much. Although I went to the mission unprepared for the messages, that God actually gave me the right messages to deliver to them. My parting shot is identity. God desires deeply to restore his identity in each one of, of us and that is what I presented at Nambole High. Sin has marred our character so much but God still is persistent because he wants us to be like him. He wants us to conform to his will and so please allow yourself to be conformed to the will of God. I'm glad I went to Nambole. I'm glad I was able to mingle in with the students. It was such a divine blessing. I think one of the other things we probably want to do in future years is be able to replicate this not only in Uganda, but I guess in other schools in Kenya, in Tanzania, possibly South Sudan, who knows, you know, so that we could be able to, if, if you can teach young children to be captivated by this truth this early. Ah, they would win so many people for Christ. So many people for Christ. So my appeal to anyone who's listening this, young or old, please share your testimony. Make whatever opportunity around you to be an experience that you could share with others who really need to know Jesus Christ. He is coming soon. Be prepared. But through God's providence, that was made possible. I'd like to challenge you, to take the challenge. And that's God working and I think 
think it's a beautiful thing that I want everyone to be encouraged. Let's go out and take the message. Thank you. It pays to serve Jesus.